Philippians 3, praying for the body of Christ, specifically Alan Barda, verse 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Father, I pray that you would humble the body of Christ, that you would humble Alan, and that he would see the book as a safeguard for him. That it's a blessing when you reach out to us and correct us. Let him receive that correction like oil on his head. Verse 2, watch out for those dogs those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh, I pray that he would see what dogs are leading the body of Christ today. He would be honest about it. Verse 3, For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. I pray that Alan would no longer put confidence in the flesh, seeing where it's gotten him, that he would now begin to actually live by faith. Verse 4, Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Verse 5, Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, six as for zeal, persecuting the church as for legalistic righteousness, faultless, seven, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Elsewhere, or in another translation, he calls it dung, which is shit. Father, I pray that that's exactly how Alan, Alan would view everything that he's accomplished in the flesh. His title as ruling elder, his son's accomplishments associated with the Jesuits, and whatever else. Even his job in this world, Ouch. it's all dung, has nothing to do with your kingdom, but all of it ultimately honors Satan. Verse 8, what's more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I pray that that's how Alan would come to feel for whose sake I have lost all things, that he would also be willing to lose everything you put your finger on for the sake of Christ, that he would consider them rubbish, that he might gain Christ. Amen. Verse 9, And be found in him, not having a righteousness of his own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Father, I pray that for Alan. Make him the strongest Christian, the most on fire Christian I've ever met. So far it's been Bill Bean, and even that was nothing when you get down to it. I've never seen anyone truly fired up for the Lord. And when I have, it's only been just like a flicker. Raise up Alan to be a flame, long-lasting, long-burning flame and to be just one of many. 10. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so Sam, somehow to, a, to attain to the, resur ah, to the resurrection from the dead. That's verse 11. And Father, I pray for Alan that that's exactly, that that would be his prayer that he would want nothing more than to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, that he would become like him in his death, 
and so as to attain the resurrection from the dead, that he would no longer be happy, content to be just a believer. Same with Reggie, all of them. They're so happy being believers when the devils believe. Happy being devils. Lord, rebuke him by your Holy Spirit even before he receives this book. Be working on him through the sermons, through Christian radio, through other people, through his circumstances, that when he gets the book, it would just be one huge confirmation. Verse 12, not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I pray that for Alan, that he would press on to take hold of the prize. 13, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I pray that for Alan, that he would put no hope, give, not even give a thought to his past accomplishments in Christ, that they would mean nothing, but that he would just focus ahead, not turning to the right or to the left, just focus on the prize and fulfilling his ministry. All of us who are mature should take such view of things. Well, he should be mature. He's been born again Christian for decades and apparently a, an elder in that church, that pagan church for decades, build him up so that he would actually be mature in the faith. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Make clear to him everything where we disagree. There's a lot. But it should be easy for you because you're God and all things are possible for you. He knows the scriptures. I know the scriptures. I have laid out everything clearly, backed it all up with scripture in relation to the new covenant. So it should be a breeze for him to be able to see the truth, convict him and let him walk in it. Verse 16, only let us live up to what we have already attained. So he calls himself a ruling elder. Let him live up to a true ruling elder. Verse 17, join with others in following my example, brothers, and take none of those who live according to Oh, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. 18.4, as I have often told you before, and now say again even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Convict Alan that that's actually what he's been doing, living as an enemy of the cross of Christ, because that whole system is pagan, because he uses a title, because he honors men who use titles who are probably hired hands and who Jesus said don't care for the sheep and for many other ways. 19, their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame, their mind is on earthly things. I pray that you would transform him, that old man would be destroyed not him, but that you would destroy everything in him that honors the flesh, which ultimately honors Satan. Verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that he would eagerly await the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would give him a disgust for this world and the things of this world, since it is quite disgusting when we look at it from your eyes. So I pray that you would give them your vision. Verse 21, last verse in the chapter. 
who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform your lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, I pray that you would increase, greatly increase, Alan's faith. Make him a pillar in the international body of Christ. A humble pillar. Amen.